In this lecture, I'll briefly talk about rhetoric, and then I'll get into the three proofs of rhetoric. Um, so rhetoric is the available means of persuasion. This is an Aristotelian term, and I can spend, it's one of those things, you know, I try to keep these lectures short, uh, but if I was in class, I could spend a great deal of time talking about uh, rhetoric and getting people involved in that conversation. But this is for persuasive speaking. You have to recognize there is an art to persuasive speaking. So that's what rhetoric is, is all about. Some people call it artistic form of persuasion. And it's basically the available means of persuasion for your audience. And you have to ask yourself, as I said in the previous lecture, who is this audience? And what are the best ways to persuade that audience? So you need to be strategic in thinking about your audience, your topic choice, and all those sorts of things. And you also have to put a lot of effort into how you persuade your audience. Okay? So three ways that you can help persuade your audience are through the use of pathos, logos, and ethos. So first we have pathos. Pathos is emotion, and it's so incredibly important to a speech. Now, by emotion, what I, I don't mean get emotional. You know, some people, I've had people get up in front of class and cry and break down and those sorts of things while talking about their topic. That's not quite the same thing as pathos. Pathos means using emotion to persuade your audience, usually in the form of storytelling. So if I'm up here and I'm delivering a speech and I want to persuade you to take a particular course of action, one of the best ways to do that is to tell stories about people that have been affected by this. The vast majority of persuasive speeches and competition will start off with a story. So we hear this story to, to begin with. And once we hear that story, then we think, oh my gosh, maybe that could happen to me because it happened to somebody else. So a good example is I once had a student who did a speech on what are called off-label prescription drugs. So you have a prescription drug, and that drug is labeled for a particular use. But a lot of doctors are taking those drugs and using them off-label. So there might be a, um, a mental health drug that they found cures back pain. So that's what happened to the, the person that was in the beginning of the story that the student talked about. He had some back pain. The doctor gave him this mental health drug. One of the problems with a lot of our sort of anti-depression drugs is that they have a side effect of depression. So one morning he woke up, went into his garage, and hanged himself because of the drug. So that's the very first thing we hear in that speech. You think, oh my gosh, this is a problem. So what you want to do when you're delivering your speeches, you want to think about, okay, as you're, as you're researching your speeches, what are those emotional components to that? Are there stories that are attached to that? And then when you get up here, you tell those stories. Okay? Another example of that is years. This is probably one of my very first classes of public speaking. A student did a speech on pool drain safety. And uh, what, what it was, and he told the story of a boy that sat on a pool drain, or, you know, I, I, it was probably 20 years ago, and I, I think it created some sort of suction that pulled the boy's intestines out. And when I tell this story in class, the entire class just goes, oh my goodness, great, you know, they, they, they freak out. And that's the point, right? So it's that kind of thing. And then, so, and I think, I don't even remember, you know, the, the, the logic part, I don't remember, it was something like 10 people in 150 years or something like that had been, pool, had been killed by pool drains. But that story from 20 years ago still stays with me. And every time I go into a public school, pool, especially with my kids, I think about that. And that's the point. So for your topics, you want to think about, again, stories that can affect your audience. Next we have logos. Logos is logic. Logic comes in many ways. Um, some people argue that organization equals logic. So the way you organize your speech and you, you set it forth in an organizational and organized structure, our audience will understand it better. Therefore, it will increase your logos. Logos also comes from numbers, statistics, percentages. So if you have a topic and you have, we, we're emotionally convinced that it, will, it will, can hurt us or harm us, we also sometimes need to be logically convinced that it will hurt us or harm us. So how many people have been affected by it? What risk factors do I have? If I live in the San Fernando Valley, could it affect me? What are the future implications of this? So that's what good persuasion is all about, is that, oh my gosh, I'm being affected in my gut, but also I'm being affected in my head, where I think, wow, this is a true issue that could affect me. Another concept is what's called ethos. Ethos is credibility. It's so important. I, you know, I spent so much time on this in my class. I, I cannot emphasize credibility enough. 
I think about the jobs that I have. I've been very fortunate. I taught at USC for four years. The only reason why I got that job is because a professor at Cal State LA recommended me for the position. That means I had credibility for that person enough to recommend. So my job here, when you go for a job interview, and it's how people perceive you, and that's so important. So what is credibility? First of all, it's perceived competence and trustworthiness. The key word here is perception. It's perceived. You don't automatically own credibility. To some audiences, I'm very credible. To some audiences, I'm not credible. And that's something I have to take into consideration. Um, so I recognize I have to be able to earn credibility for my audience. Okay. So perception is, is key. And it's always audience own. Audience own means the audience decides whether or not I'm credible. And every once in a while, I go on to rate my professor and see the reviews. And the majority of them are positive. But they don't get a couple that are negative. They don't like me. They don't like what I do. They don't like what I talk about. And that's valid. That's absolutely valid. You know, just because one person perceives you positively doesn't mean it's not okay that somebody else perceives you negatively. But what you try to do as a speaker, as a communicator, is you try to manage it to the best of your ability. So a good example is this with this particular video. Right? My, I, I, my other video, I just kind of went for it. It's one of my first videos. I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing a t-shirt. That when I watch a video, it looks a little too tight. So I know that an easy way to earn credibility from your audience is how you look, how you dress. So for this video, I decided to dress up a little bit better. So I could manage that. So you might see me differently now, wearing clothes that are a little bit nicer as opposed to the clothes that I wore before. Yep. So one article that I read not too long ago, and I wish I had the link for it, I'd put it up, but I can't, I can't find it, uh, was on habits. And I love the way they talked about credibility and habits. And they defined ethos as the habits that you do and don't do every single day. And they had a breakdown of some of the things that make somebody credible and make somebody not credible. So a good example is just punctuality. You know, a lot of people in class, I've had people come in, it's an 8 a.m. class. Some people are late every single day. You know, that's, then I, that's going to affect my perception of that person because it makes me wonder how serious that person is about the class. Okay? So there's going to be a discussion on credibility, and it's going to be how to earn. So the question for the discussion is how do you earn credibility from your audience? And I'll also add a couple more questions to that, so read the discussion prompt for more details.